My latest video reviewing the Axiom cards from Beyond the Gates has done extremely well. Thanks for all of the feedback and faction suggestions. Today we'll be revisiting the series with a review of the Muna card pool. It's an exciting time for Altered. Thousands of unique cards have hit the Altered website as backers in Europe open their boosters. The game will have a big presence at Gen Con this week, and North American backers can expect their pledges to arrive in the coming month. Once they do and before the marketplace brings stable pricing, I think the easiest way to get rare and unique cards will be to trade your own cards of the same rarity. To have the equivalent number of rare cards needed, you'll need about one display per faction you plan to complete. I think a lot of people underordered in Europe, and booster boxes were going for 200 plus each and still sold out almost immediately. Right now, you can pre-order a Kickstarter display from Gamers Guild for around $150. That's basically MSRP at $4 a pack, and it's probably the lowest we'll ever see prices again once people find out about the game at Gen Con or open their pledges and realize they want more cards. With free shipping and the potential to get foils, promos, alt art cards, or even a golden booster, I've already decided to get another display. And if you want more too, consider ordering through the link in the description of this or my other videos. It'll help the channel a lot so I can continue to provide quality content and bring you a ton of pack openings in the future. Now let's jump into the Muna review. The three heroes from Beyond the Gates are Tasia and Nora, Arjun and Spike, and Rin and Orchid. Tasia gives your first character played each day a boost, which works great with self-anchoring cards that can get value out of the increased stats for two days. Those tend to be plants, which pair well with Yongsu and Hydrocana. Just watch out for opposing removal spells. Arjun can give cards you play anchored on his own by discarding a card from your reserve. As such, he wants to see three cost cards with great stats, like Daughter of Yggdrasil. Pair those with things that resupply to set up your hero effect, and you'll be ready to put pressure on your opponents. Rin and Orchid draw cards when you advance due to forest. The extra cards can help you assemble combos, like having one each of the fleeting anchored and asleep characters needed to achieve Lyra Festival's alternate win condition. But you can still go for a normal win too, and use Rin's effect to set up Copelia or put cards with a support ability in the reserve. Now that we've got a feel for each of the heroes, let's look at the cards available to them. First up is Muna Caregiver. I'll give this a 2 for Tasia. I think it can be pretty good to re-anchor your characters, but I found that sometimes since it's so low cost, it can make me run out of resources, and also sometimes it's a little tricky to fit into the curve. For Arjun, I feel like this is definitely a 1 out of 3. The stats are awful, and since you can essentially give any character the support ability from Muna Caregiver, it's pretty unnecessary. For Rin, I think this is a 2 out of 3. It could be pretty good in a more traditional list to anchor some valuable cards, and in Festival, you can play this as a cheap character or anchor something as well. For the rare version, I feel like the increased stats isn't that beneficial, so I'm just going to give it a 1 to everyone, because you'll mostly be using this for the support ability from the reserve, so you'll only really get to take advantage of the stats one time. Spindle Harvesters is a fun card. For Tasia, I'll give it a 2 out of 3. I feel like when we had less plants to choose from, that we would always be maxing out on this, but now I feel like you can be a little bit more selective. This is pretty strong and can give you some early combos with Young Su, but I think some of the lists will be ramping more and they'll need more expensive cards to fill their curve. For Arjun, I think this is a 2 out of 3 as well. If you're trying to anchor Young Su, you'll definitely want to run this, but it's definitely not necessary and some people might take a different route. For Rin, I'll give this a 3 out of 3. Since you want to win it, since you want to win in 4 specifically, I feel like it's great to get that one 4 stat two turns in a row. And in a festival list, this is basically your best card. The rare change is kind of fun, but I don't think it's really necessary anywhere. For Tasia, I'll give this a 2 out of 3. I feel like you have to change your list a good amount to be able to take advantage of this effect, but I think some people might want to do it. For Arjun though, I think this is now a 1 out of 3. I feel like you're already going to be going all in on anchoring your 3 drops over and over and so I feel like trying to split your game plan between this doesn't work very well. For Rin, I could see this scene play since you'll have a lot of cards that are better from the reserve. I feel like some people might want to try and use this as kind of an engine to just keep churning out those good reserve cards. Mowgli seems cool, but I feel like it's a little understated and doesn't seem great for some of the heroes. For Tasia and Arjun, I feel like it doesn't really have a place. There's not really any synergy with Tasia's game plan, and I don't think the stats are quite strong enough for this to see play in Arjun. Especially since this is best from the reserve and not the hand, it doesn't really work with his hero power either. But for Rin, I feel like this is great for the more traditional versions, where you'll have to find ways to be more aggressive, and having cheap characters will be a nice way to take advantage of the card advantage that the hero provides. The rare version of Mowgli gets the Moonadruid support ability. I think that that's a little unfortunate since one of the best parts of playing this card is when you get it for one from the reserve, but maybe that's okay in some decks. For Tasia though, I feel like there are better ways to anchor your characters, and with Arjun's hero effect, this is completely unnecessary. This could see play in Rin, but you might honestly just run around the common or something else with this same support ability. Kitsune is one of the only draw cards for the Muna faction, but giving a card to your opponent as well isn't that amazing. I think some people might run it in Tasia to keep their hand size up, but it's definitely not necessary. For Arjun, I I don't think you're ever really running this because the rare version is going to be a lot better for your game plan. 
And for Ren, I think this could be pretty great in festival lists because it can help you more consistently see your powerful cards. But in a traditional list, since it has a zero for forest, I don't think you're gonna run it. The rare version switches things up quite a bit since now you're gonna be resupplying instead of drawing. For Tasia and Ren, this is honestly a downgrade, so I'm just gonna give it a one. But for Arjun, this is the exact kind of card you wanna see. The stats are really good, which can help you be aggressive early on, and it'll set you up to have something in reserve so that you can play a three cost card and then anchor it. Kodama is interesting because it has great stats, but they're delayed for a day. For Tasia, I still think this is going to be pretty good just because you don't have a lot of anchored 1 and 2 drops, so you'll kind of need this to fill out your curve and also set up extra plants before you drop a rare Hydra. For Arjun, I think this could see play. The stats are pretty good, so with the right planning, I feel like you could get some value out of this. And this is crazy good in the festival version of Rin. And without easy access to boost, this is probably better than Sneezer Shroom in a more traditional list as well. The rare version gets the anchored support ability. I think it could be alright in Tasia, so some people might run it, but it's not super necessary. As we've mentioned before, an ability like this doesn't really do anything for Arjun, but for Rin I think this is still really good because it gives you more ways to use this to help with your festival game plan. The common Sneezer Shroom is going to be pretty outshined by the rare version, but even in this form I still think it's good in Tasia. For Arjun, you definitely might run this if you have the Young Su package, but it's far from one of your best cards. And for Rin this will be amazing with festival as well, but it's probably not something you're going to run in a normal list. I think the rare version is going to be really popular. It seems super good in Tasia. You'll essentially get two worth of stats on the first day and three on the next. For Arjun, this doesn't perfectly fit your strategy, but since this is a pretty strong card, I think it might see some play anyway. And for Rin, this won't be the version you run in Festival, but you might want it in a normal list where you can try and anchor this over and over. Muna Merchant's a little disappointing to me. I think the reserve cost especially is a little steep. While this fits the game plan of some of the heroes, I'm just going to give the common a 1 for everyone because I think there are going to be other cards that outshine it. The rare gets a little more exciting now with the lower reserve cost, but I don't think it's necessary everywhere. For Tasia, I think this is definitely a 1 since she doesn't need the resupply, but for Arjun, I think this could see play. The costing is fine and you might need that extra card advantage until you'll burn through your resources. And for Rin, since this has the strongest stats in Forest, I feel like it naturally fits, and this will also help you dig for the cards you need in a festival list. With the full set, Inari's been surpassed by pretty much everything. I feel like it's overpriced from hand and just barely priced from reserve, so I'm going to give it a 1 everywhere. And I think the rare version will be fun to use casually, but since it requires another card to anchor it to get any value, I don't think it'll be super competitive. So I'll keep the 1s for everyone. Moonager is the first character we saw with the support ability to be able to give something with a hand cost of 3 or less anchored, and I think it'll fit really well in Tasia and Rin. In Tasia, since you can boost this on day 1, it'll be easy to trade expeditions and then set up the effect in the reserve. And for Rin, you can put it straight there, which is good too. For Arjun, I think this is pretty bad since the stats aren't great from hand and you can essentially turn any card into this in the reserve. I like the change to the rare version, it gives you better stats overall, and boosting an anchored character will be especially good in Tasia. For Arjun, you won't have as many plants, and I don't think this really fits. And for Rin, this might have a place if you go really plant heavy, but I don't think all of the lists will go that direction. Like Inari, the common aloe vera needs another card to anchor it for it to get any value out of its effect, which you'll only really be able to do in Arjun, so I'm going to give it a 1 for the other heroes and a 2 for him. The stats aren't that impressive, and if you do anchor this, it might be hard to stay in water for two days in a row, so I think I think this card will be a little underwhelming. Now that the rare version can anchor itself, it's a little more self-sufficient. In Tasia, where this gets a boost, you'll get some good value out of having it out for two turns. And with a hand cost of three, it'll be pretty easy to re-anchor. For Arjun, you'll probably prefer stronger cards that you just anchor with his effect or even the common over this, so I'll give it a one. And for Rin, I think this is a two because she'll have a lot of cards that she wants to resupply, but without an easy way to boost this, I don't know if the stats are good enough that you have to run it. Daughter of Yggdrasil is pretty beefy. I think the only thing holding this version back though is that you give your opponent a draw, which can be a big deal throughout the course of the game. I'll give it a 2 everywhere because the stats are incredible, but players will just have to weigh those against the drawbacks. Now the rare version gives you a draw as well, which essentially cancels out the card you're giving to your opponent. That leaves us with a pretty good rate, and I think it's honestly pretty great everywhere. For Arjun, this will be one of the best cards that you can anchor with his hero ability. And in Rin, since this has a 5 in Forest, it'll be a great way for you to activate your hero effect, and a strong character that you can anchor with your support abilities. For Tasia, I think this has the least synergy, but the stats are so good, and with few draw options, I think you'll probably run this anyway. Dracana feels like a slightly more expensive version of the rare Sneezer Shroom. That's going to be great in Tasia, and this is maybe even your best day one play. Characters that already anchor themselves don't really have a lot of synergy with Arjun, but if you're running Young Su, I could see players fitting this in anyway. And the stats you get for the cost are pretty good, so it might fill some of the last spots in a deck. For Rin, I don't like this since it has a zero in Forest, so I don't expect it to see much play with her. 
For the rare version, it has one less in mountain and water to start, but at noon it gains two boosts now instead of one. I think that's only really going to be worth it if you can re-anchor this card so it can boost itself more than once. That is possible in Tasia, but I don't think it's going to be quite as good as the common for her. And for Arjun, this doesn't really fit at all. For Rin, it is still sad that this has a zero in forest, but since most of its stats are going to be coming from the boost, it'll get pretty big in forest quickly. And with lots of support abilities to anchor cards, she might be the hero that can keep this around the easiest. Yongsu is fairly costed from hand, and if you control two or more plants, it can gain two boosts. That's going to be really easy to pull off in Tasia, and this will be a great card for days you want to push both expeditions. In Arjun, this is probably the best card that you can anchor, but because it takes a lot of setup, I think some people will choose to run other cards instead. For Rin, I don't expect her to be running a ton of plants, but if she does, you could possibly fit this in. The rare version's a bit of a side grade. It costs less, but it's also going to have less stats by the end as well. In an aggressive Tasia list, that might be pretty good so that you can do your powerful stuff early, but in Arjun, I think it's strictly worse. And I think this is a little too different from your game plan to get a rare slot in Rin as well. Sternness feels a little bit like a bigger Inari. Without an effect and just okay stats, I don't think it'll see play anywhere. The discount on the rare version is nice, and now it actually has synergy with a lot of the cards that anchor things with a hand cost of 3 or less, so I think this version could definitely see some play. Especially in Arjun, where you can anchor this as early as day 2, I think it'll be a powerhouse. For Tasia, I think you definitely have better options, and for Rin, I think this definitely might see play. It'd be a pretty good card to play on the first day to try and trigger your hero effect, and maybe even block your opponent while advancing, and in the late game the stats won't be bad either. I think Pravati's hovering right around the edge of playability everywhere. I think all of the heroes have something that they could benefit from re-anchoring, but there are a lot of ways to do that and I could easily see this getting edged out by other cards. Getting the anchored effect twice with the rare version is nice. In Tasia, I think this could still be okay, but oftentimes it might be just equally good to play another new anchored character from hand. For Arjun, I feel like the common is pretty comparable, and so I feel like you want to slave that rare slot for something else. And for Rin, I only really see this being played in a version that's trying to re-anchor something like Dracaena over and over. I think Aja is honestly a lot better than a lot of people realize. The stats aren't bad, so you'll rarely get behind playing this. And if you build your deck right, you can probably get more advantage out of the extra mana than your opponent. I think some people will definitely use this in Tasia so you can get your Hydra out a little earlier. And in Arjun, where you're running a ton of 3 drops, this isn't honestly even bad since you'll go straight to 6 mana and then you can play 2 of your strong cards. This can help you have more mana to prepare for a festival turn, or even just set you up to do cool stuff with cards like Son of Yuga so quickly. The rare version can be used to either ramp twice or to get an anchor effect from the reserve. I think that's pretty good still in Tasia, especially because you can use it to anchor something like Daughter of Yggdrasil before you play Hydrakana. Once again, this does nothing for you in Arjun, but for Rin, free anchors that you can put in the reserve will never be bad. I really don't expect Verdant back to see a lot of play. I'm gonna give it a 1 everywhere because Defender is one of the worst keywords, and even though it loses Defender if you control 2 or more plants, it's gonna be pretty easy for your opponent to use a removal card on one of your other plants and suddenly this will have Defender again. I also feel like this card is just straight up worse than Yongsu, because if you control 2 plants, he'll already be a 5-5-5 five, five, five for 3 mana. For the rare version, this card costs 3 now, but it also has slightly worse stats. It's a little sad because this still seems worse than the common Yongsu pretty much everywhere. If this sees play, I think it might be an Arjun. Maybe there you could take advantage of the fact that you can anchor this on one day and block your opponent, and then on the following day you can play the plants from hand and remove the defender, whereas Yongsu you already have to have the plants in play the first time when you anchor him. And common Coman seems a little overcosted. I don't really expect any of the heroes to run it. If you drop this, your opponent could easily 2-0 you, so I don't really think it'll see play anywhere. Now that the rare costs one less, some people will definitely be using it in Tasia, since you can boost it with her hero effect and be fourth of stats two days in a row. And while Aloe Vera can fill a similar role, this works better with mechanical training Ganesha, so I think it has a place. But for the other heroes where you can't boost this easily, I think you have other things that you'd rather be doing. I'm pretty unimpressed with Son of Yggdrasil. If your opponent has cheap removal, you'll get completely wrecked. I also feel like it's only really good if you can be in forest on both sides, but that's pretty hard to pull off. For the rare version, having tough 1 makes it a little bit better into removal, but if they have it, they'll still get a pretty good deal. In Arjun, this doesn't really have a place. Maybe this could see some play in Tasia and Rin. In Tasia, since you can buff it with the hero effect, it will have pretty good stats for both expeditions, but this would probably have to be a finisher. Otherwise, on 6 mana, you'd rather just be angering some characters to set up for Hydrakana. And in Rin, it's nice that the biggest stat is in Forest, and in matchups against decks with removal, you can just put this into the reserve for the support ability. 
In the first expansion, I feel like Hydra Kane is the ultimate boss character. If this sticks around, you win its expedition every day for the rest of the game. I think this could be a pretty good finisher in Teja and Arjun, where you can easily set up some anchored characters going into the day you play this, so even if your opponent has a removal, you'll still have some board presence left over. I feel like this is the least suited to be run in a Rin deck. You don't have that much stuff that synergizes with it, and so I think if you're going to run this, you'll pick one of the other heroes. Now the rare version gets tough X, equal to the number of plants you control. This can be pretty incredible in Tasia, where you'll be able to set up plants easily. This can easily have at least tough 3, which will make it really hard for any deck to deal with. For a less aggressive, more value-oriented Arjun deck, I could see you running this as well. I think it fits more naturally into Tasia, but you can still anchor something like Daughter of Yggdrasil the turn before you play this, so it wouldn't be bad with him either. And once again in Ren, I just feel like if you want to run Hydrakana, you should stick to one of the other heroes. Our first out of faction rare is Keylon Elemental. The stats on this are pretty good for a 2 drop, but I feel like it doesn't quite fit in any of the heroes. For Tejda, you don't have a ton of need to put your cards in the reserve with its effect, and while you do want to do this in Arjun, I feel like it'll burn through your resources too quickly, so you'd rather run something like the rare Kitsune. And in Rin, you also want to put stuff in the reserve, but I feel like since this has a 1 in Forest, it's a little underwhelming. Maybe you could see some play in a festival deck paired with Coppelia, but I think you have other options, so it's not even necessary there. Coppelia has worse total stats than Keylon Elemental, so I don't think you're running it unless you get the effect, which you can only really pull off in Rin, but in Rin I think this is awesome. The big 4 stat is nice, and this is one of the best cards you can put in the reserve with her hero effect. Ogin seems like incredible value, but I found in practice a lot of times it just doesn't quite work right with the cards I have available. This fits best in Tasia, where you'll have a lot of anchored plants, but at best it's usually around 2 boosts, so it's not necessarily better than other options like physical training. For the other two heroes, I feel like this will be way too inconsistently good to run. Axiom Scrambler is exactly the same as the common version from Axiom, but I don't even think it's playable at a common, and much less a rare. Even without a lot of other sabotage options for Muna, I feel like there'd have to be a pretty amazing deck that this is a perfect counter to before I'd be running this in any of the heroes. Ganesha seems pretty fun, and most often I think you'll use it to re-anchor cards like Sneezer Shroom, but with a cost of 7, it's competing directly with Hydra Kana, and most of the time I think it's going to lose out. In a Tasia deck with a lot of mana ramp, I could see you running one or two copies of this alongside Hydra Kana, but it's far from necessary, and in the other heroes I don't think it really has a place. Isn't Boshi is an okay one drop, and you could use it to boost an anchored character, but I think there's a lot of competition for the rare slots. In Tasia, I feel like it's not quite good enough, and in Arjun, I don't feel like it has a place either. If this is going to see play, I think it's going to be in Rin. There you can put this in the reserve with your hero, and use it to get the boost that you're missing out on since you're not playing Tasia. I think Chiron's pretty much strictly worse than Ogun. If you are playing Plants, his impact to the board is going to be the same or worse for any number of characters. It'll take some new cards being introduced to the card pool before this sees any play. Tiny Shin's another way to ramp your mana. In Tasia, it'll be easy to boost this even from hand, so I could definitely see people using it to help get to Hydra or other power plays quicker. But in Arjun, I think this is a little slow. For Rin, since you can put this straight into the reserve, or use some of your other support abilities to boost Tiny Jin, I think it could have a place. Sun Wukong's a little unremarkable as well. If you want to boost your other characters, I think Ordis Gatekeeper is going to be the way to go. And if you're using the boost on himself, I feel like the stats you get are just okay, so I don't see this being played anywhere. Esmeralda gives access to resupply. I think it's pretty unnecessary in Tasia, and in Rin, since this has a zero forest stat, you'll probably look for other characters that resupply. But for Arjun, this is incredible. You can use it to keep your reserve full so you can consistently anchor your three drops. Lyra Thespian feels like a mini Young Su. It'll be easiest to meet the requirement in Tasia, and I could definitely see people playing this in an aggressive version of her, but I think it's a little unnecessary, and if you want a lot of stats, you can often do that with Young Su or Daughter of Yggdrasil, so I think this will only see some play. And for the other heroes, it'll be pretty hard to activate the effect, so I don't think it'll see much play at all. Cloth Dancer can be used to mess up your opponent, but for Tasia, I feel like you'll just get more value out of setting up your own powerful characters, and I think the same is true for Arjun and Rin as well. Loki's a nice way to refill your hand, but once again it's competing with the same spot as Hydra Kana. At 7 mana, if you just play 5 in stats, it's going to be pretty easy for your opponent to 2 you as well, so I don't really see this having a place in the set 1 meta. Kokoba is another Yongsu lookalike, but since it takes a rare slot and has worse stats without the boost, I think it's going to be strictly worse. And 3 or more other characters is pretty hard to pull off, so I don't really see this scene play anywhere. Ordis Gatekeeper is pretty great for the cost, and especially if you put the boost on an anchored character, you'll get a lot of value. In Tasia, if people are running the rare Spindle Harvesters, I think this will definitely see play, but otherwise I think people would just go for the rare Moona Druid. And in Arjun and Rin, I think it'll be a little too tricky to get value out of this card. 
Quetzalcoatl is alright, but I think it'll be a little too much work to anchor it, and if you don't, you're not really getting value out of the effect. So in Rin and Tasia, I'm just going to give this a 1. But for Arjun, where you can easily anchor this with your hero effect, I think it could be pretty good. Against decks that don't draw extra cards, this is worse than Cerninus, but if things like Traced are popular, this could be really good. But if hero like Traced are popular, this could be really good. The first spell is Harvest, which resupplies. This seems like a waste of mana in Tasia, but for Arjun, I think this is really good. For one mana, you can get two cards in the reserve, which will both turn into anchors later on. And in Rin, you can use this to dig for festival combo pieces, or even just to hopefully put one of the many cards with the support ability in your reserve. While the rare version doubles down on the effect, I still don't think it's necessary in Tasia. And for Arjun, I feel like the common's good enough and you don't like the increased cost. But I think people will want to try this out in Rin. Getting 2 resupply means you'll almost always hit a card with a good support ability. And if that's an anchor, this is already as good as meditation training. And in a festival list, you'll be able to plow through your deck to find the cards you need. Beauty Sleep was a powerhouse in the early meta before all of the cards were revealed, but now I feel like there are a lot more removal options. This can be amazing to take both expeditions on the last day, but if you use it early on on your opponent's characters, you'll still have to deal with them later. You can also use it to preserve one of your characters if it gets blocked by your opponent, so with multiple uses, I think it'll definitely see some play in Tasia. But if the meta forces you to run a lot of other removal spells as well, you might have to cut this so you don't end up in situations with a handful of a lot of cards that don't do anything. This is probably at its best in Arjun, where you can play it super cheap from hand and then discard it to give something anchored on the same day. In Rin with all of your draw you'll be able to find this pretty easily as well and the cheap hand cost makes this your second best sleep to Kodama in Festival. The rare version can be a nice option if you're sleeping your own characters, but without continuous effects on your characters like with Waru or the Bureaucrats, there's not really a way to get advantage out of this, so I don't think it'll be a necessary upgrade for any of the heroes. And with all the cards available, I feel like Nurture is kind of underwhelming. You'd want to get double value out of this by buffing two anchored characters that you just played, but it takes a lot of mana to do that. And in most other situations, it's just alright, so I don't think it'll see a lot of play. The rare version gives double the boost for a little bit of an increased cost, but I think it's just a little too awkward to use effectively to be worthwhile. Meditation training is pretty solid for a common. Getting to keep a good 3 cost card around that you're already playing for 2 mana is a pretty good rate. Even from the reserve, it's fairly costed, and if you're able to re-anchor something that's buffing itself, like Sneezer's Room or Jacana in Tasia, it'll be really strong. This is incredible in Arjun too. You can play it cheaply from hand to re-anchor the 3 drop that stuck around from last turn, and then immediately discard it from the reserve to anchor a new card with Arjun's effect. Even in Rin, I think it could see some play to anchor something like a Daughter of Yggdrasil. If you're trying to play this twice, the discounted reserve cost on the rare can be nice, but I think you'd have better options in Tasia, so you'd probably just stick with the common. For Arjun, you're mostly just using it from hand once and then discarding it with his effect, so this change is completely unnecessary. But in Rin, I think this is still strong. The support ability to boost something is pretty nice if you resupply into this, or to combo with Son of Yggdrasil. And for now, Mana Reaping is the best common removal that Muna has access to. I'll give it a 2 everywhere because I think it's pretty solid. If you want removal for permanents and big characters in all of your matchups, you'll probably opt to run some of the rare removals instead, because giving your opponent an extra mana is a pretty big deal. But if you only want removal in some matchups, I think it'll be better to run a common like this, so you aren't too sad when you put it in the mana. The rare version loses fleeting, but I honestly don't think you'd ever want to play this twice. If your opponent has 2 more mana, it'll be hard to overcome, so I'm going to give this a 1 for Tasia and Rin. The only reason it's going to stay at 2 for Arjun is because without fleeting it'll go to the reserve, so now you can discard it for his hero effect. With the current card pool, mechanical training is basically just another meditation training, since you'll only really be able to use it to re-anchor some of your characters. If you're maxing out on meditation training or want to use this on your cone man, I could definitely see people playing this in Tasia, but it's not necessary. And in Arjun and Rin, you're going to have a lot less targets for this, so I don't think it'll see play. Physical training can be pretty great to buff up a small anchored character, and this could honestly see play anywhere. This is nice with Sneezer Shroom and Spindle Harvesters in Tasia, but some lists may just want to play a bigger anchored character instead to conserve their resources in hand. In Arjun though, I definitely like this as a cheap spell that gets good value and then you can discard immediately for his effect. And in Rin, this could be a way to make anchored characters worthwhile since you don't naturally have a buff like Tasia. I think mana channeling doesn't really have a place in any of the heroes. In Tasia, Aja and Bountiful Meadow are better ramp, and maybe even Tiny Jin as well. Since you need to set up some anchored characters before playing Hydra, you only really have time to play one ramp, so I think you'll just stick to the better options. For Arjun, I think this is too low tempo. His cards are also pretty cheap, so you won't need a ton of mana. And in Rin, while this could maybe see some play to ramp into something like Son of Yggdrasil, there probably aren't enough big payoff cards for this to be necessary. But in the future, as the card pool expands, I think this will definitely see play. 
Mana Eruption is a pretty great removal, but I think it has a hard time fitting into any of the Muna decks. For Tasia, getting rid of a Mana Orb means you won't be able to play Hydra as fast, and with Arjun, since you get low on resources, if you discard one of your Mana Orbs, you might not have something else to put there later. For Rin, this could maybe see play, but I just think Koth Cocoon will be better. Acapella Training can be a pretty good anti-meta card, but because it doesn't really progress your game plan, I don't think it'll see a ton of play. For Tasia and Rin, we'll probably only use this as something like Traced as Tier 1, but for Arjun, I could see some people trying this out, since it's also a cheap way to get a card in your reserve. And as I've hinted, I think Cloth Cocoon's gonna be pretty good. If you want to consistently be able to discard permanents, I think this card's the way to go. Against Sleeping Bureaucrats, it's gonna trade really well too, so I think it's likely we'll be seeing this in a lot of decks. If you aren't trading up though and are just taking out average 2 and 3 cost cards with this, you'll probably end up dropping it to play your own strong threats instead. Paint Prison's another way to get rid of annoying cards, but I don't think it's quite as good as some of the others we've seen before. To get it to cost 3 like Cloth Cocoon, you have to discard a card from your reserve, but at that point, instead of discarding the card, it's going to put it on top of your opponent's deck. This almost seems better at putting really bad cards on top of their deck so they have to draw them again instead of actually getting rid of good cards, because at that point you'll just be facing them again the next day. I think it's pretty unlikely this would ever beat out Mana Reaping and Cloth Cocoon in any of the heroes. And while Charge is super good in Ordus, it's going to be pretty hard to get a ton of characters on the board for this, so I think it's only alright. There are a lot of other strong boosting options like Ogun that are probably better than this. For the first permanent, I think the Spindle Muna Bastion can be really good, but only in specific matchups. It'll really depend on the meta to know if this will see play. If Izmir's really popular, I think this could be a great fit in any of the heroes. But if most decks are running 4 or less cards that target characters, I don't think you'll want to run this. At that point, the tempo you lose from playing this is about the same as getting set back by one removal throughout the game. For the next one, the at noon ability to give a boost is pretty cool, but it'll only really work with anchored characters for the second day. So while it is nice, I think you're only playing this card if you really want the tough effect as well. This might be okay in Tasia because with a bunch of anchored characters, you can take advantage of the boost and tough, but I feel like for the other heroes, you just run the common because you're going to be putting this in the mana too often to be worth the rare slot. Bountiful Meadow is really strong. It's essentially a one cost mana ramp for the rest of the game because you can get the discount on the turn it's played. Losing out on one mana once to have an extra mana for the rest of the game seems super good to me. And with a ton of plants, Tejo will definitely be running this. For a lot of Arjun builds, I don't think you'll be playing a plant every turn, so I think it'll be a little harder to consistently use this card. And I also feel like it's unnecessary for Arjun because he can already do a lot of strong things with only a couple of mana. But depending on the build for Rin, you'll definitely want this. From normal decks to festival, if you're running plants, this could see play. The resupply on the rare is interesting. The upgrade to Haven Bravo's Bastion is definitely better because you also get a resupply without having to pay one, but in some decks this could still be beneficial. I think that you'll save your rare slots for something else in Tasia, but for Arjun, getting the resupply to have a card in your reserve might be just what you need to make this good enough to actually see play. It still might not be as good as something like Kitsune on 5, but since you can tap this after it's played, you could play this on 5 to get a resupply and then discard that card and play Daughter of Yggdrasil afterwards cheaply, so I think there could maybe be a place for it. And with a bunch of good resupply targets in Rana, I think this could see play as well, especially in Festival where you're okay losing some tempo up front to set up for the late game. Looking at out of faction permanents, I feel like Axiom Reprocessor is a little underwhelming. I think a lot of heroes could benefit from the daily resupply, but as I mentioned in my Axiom review, I think this is just a little too low tempo to see play. For the same cost, you can play the Monolith Ordis Bastion. If you're running Spindle Harvesters and Tasia, this could be really good. You'll get a booth from the Monolith and Tasia, so it'll already have enough boost to resupply at noon. With all of the anchored characters you play, you can also get a lot of value out of this, but I think it might be a little too low tempo to see play. I also think you don't want to get too far behind playing something like this, so that you can be about even with your opponent when you play a slow turn later to drop your Hydrocana. And if this was just okay for Tasia, for Arjun you get a lot less value out of it, and I don't think you can afford the tempo loss, because I feel like a lot of Arjun lists will have to be a little more aggressive early on so I'll give this just a 1 there. For Rin though, I could see this being played again. Once it's down, it completely makes up for not having Tasia's hero power, and with the extra cards you start drawing, it could help you take back control. But it is still low tempo, so I could see players going either way. Lyra Festival's a wild card. I could see people running it as an alternate win condition, but having tested it, I feel like it's not that good in practice. It's way too likely to be a dead card in your hand, and even in Tasia where you have all the right cards to pull this off, it's actually pretty unlikely to get them all at the right time, so I'd give this a 1 for Tasia. I'm sure some people will try it as a 1 or 2 of, but I think it'll get dropped over time. And in Arjun, I absolutely would never consider this as an alternate win condition, just because you burn through your resources too much, so I think it would be almost impossible to assemble such a big combo. But for Rin, this card can really shine. 
With her extra draw, you'll be able to find the important pieces easily. And you don't mind that you don't have a board-based hero effect like Tasia, because you're just gonna win with the alternate win condition anyway. I've tried lists that can win through normal means as well as the Era Festival, but I found that it's a little hard to commit to both strategies. I think it's best to just go all in on Festival, and if your opponent has removal, just try and do the combo twice throughout the game. I don't think Lyra Festival will be super competitive, because it is pretty easy for your opponent to disrupt you, but Rin can super consistently pull it off, so if you run this card in Muna, I'm pretty sure it'll be with her. Congrats on making it through the full review. Did you catch any cards that you think I over or underrated? If so, let me know which ones and why in the comments. And if you're still waiting for a specific faction to get a review, feel free to give them a shout out as well. I can't wait to open my displays soon. If you decide to order more in the coming days, don't hesitate to come back here and use the link in the description. The channel has grown exponentially recently, and it's thanks to the support of all of you. Thanks again for tuning in and being a part of the Altered community.